I'm James, this is Auto House Hamilton, and once again I'm talking car parts. This time we're treading close to being a little bit uh, contentious, and we're going to talk about the intermediate shaft as used in the M96 series engines. So the first question is, what is an M96 engine? And the M96 engine is, uh, is Porsche's nomenclature for the engine that was used in the 986 Boxster series, and also in 996 Carrera, Carrera 4, and Carrera 4S cars. If you own a 996 GT3, or a 996 Turbo, or a GT2, nothing I'm going to say today need be of any concern to you whatsoever. So, what is an intermediate shaft, and what is an intermediate shaft bearing? Well, the term intermediate comes from the Greek phrase, meaning that's probably going to be very expensive. The intermediate shaft is a shaft that, as its name implies, is an intermediary, and it's an intermediary between the crankshaft and the camshafts, and here is one. So it's a, it's a shaft that's driven um, at the crankshaft end uh, by a gear, and then we've got a set of sprockets at each end of it, and they run the camshafts for the, the left and right bank um, of that flat six engine. We're looking at the back of an M96 engine here. So the things that are immediately obvious, here we have the back of the crankshaft, and just below it, we have the intermediate shaft cover, intermediate shaft bearing cover. So just behind that sits the intermediate shaft bearing. And then off to the side here, we can see uh, one of the camshafts that'll be driven from a chain that goes from the intermediate shaft, which runs here, across to that, to that camshaft. And mirror image on the back of the engine, we're, we're looking uh, at what is the, the back left. And over on, the, on our um, opposite side, so on our left, on the back of the engine, is the opposite camshaft. And the real cause of concern is, uh, is the bearing that lives uh, in here. And you can see, I'll include some pictures that I took that shows that this bearing face is rather the worse for wear because this particular intermediate shaft, or the bearing of this intermediate shaft, suffered a failure um, and uh, the results weren't too pretty. So the problem is that that intermediate shaft bearing can head south and take the rest of the engine with it. And the reason why that bearing is prone to failure is it was designed, um, installed, packed with grease with a seal over the life of the engine. That seal loses its efficiency or its efficacy and the grease finds its way out. From that point on, you're relying on splash lubrication to keep that bearing lubricated. So what are the risk factors? Well, it seems that cars that lead a busier life, that are driven more regularly and more enthusiastically, seem to be less prone to failure, but nobody really knows for sure. The other thing nobody really knows for sure is exactly what those failure rates are. Best guesses are that uh, it's somewhere in the region of 10% for single row bearing engines and somewhat lower, somewhere between 1% and 5% for the dual row bearings which were fitted to the earlier engines. And that leads on to which version of the IMS bearing is your car likely to have? Well, if it was in the first two years of production, it will have a double row bearing. If it was in the last two years of production, it will have a single row bearing. And if it's in those middle years of production, well, it could have a single or a double row bearing, and nobody can tell you until you've, you've dismantled the, the bearing cover and had a look to see exactly what's there. Even with the vehicle's VIN, there's no way of knowing which bearing has been used for those middle years of production. If the IMS bearing is something that concerns you, then what are the options open to you? Well, the simplest is to replace with another genuine Porsche IMS bearing, but very few people go that route. What most people opt to do is to, to replace the bearing with an uprated bearing, something that looks like this. In this case, this is a replacement dual row bearing made by L and N Engineering. And there's a very similar bearing that goes in place of the single row bearing. What we're fitting now is, is a retrofit, which has a, a thin dual row bearing to go in place of the originally fitted single row bearing. Another option is to fit uh, a plain metal pressure fed bearing, which is a bearing of the same sort of design as engines have used for crankshafts and connecting rod bearings um, for as long as engines have been made. But 
here at Order House Hamilton, we haven't implemented that as a solution, mostly because it seems like a, an overly complicated solution to a fairly simple problem. You can also look at fitting a warning device, which will give you flashing lights and buzzers when the device detects metal particles in your oil, which would indicate that the bearing has failed. But really, that's a bit like shutting the stable door immediately the horse is bolted. Once the horse is gone, it really doesn't matter how quickly you're going to shut that door, it's not going to bring the horse back. So, as the owner of a 986 or a 996 series car, what should you be doing? Well, the simplest and easiest and potentially cheapest is just to do nothing and drive the car with the original factory fitted bearing. Statistically, that might not be an entirely ridiculous approach. And I'll do another video where I look at the statistics involved. But most people seem more comfortable with, uh, with fitting an aftermarket bearing. Now, when LNN Engineering launched the ceramic bearing that I showed you earlier, it was launched as a, as a fit and forget and the lifetime solution to, to problems associated with IMS bearing failure. But subsequent to that, they've launched a pressure-fed pressure bearing, which they market as the IMS solution, and that is marketed as the fit and forget answer. And the uprated bearing is now marketed as having a useful life of around four years or 80,000 kilometers. But if you think about that 80,000 kilometers in the life of these cars as they are now, most of them are unlikely to do more than another 80,000 kilometers. They're not being used as daily drivers anymore. They're used as a, as a weekend plaything. So 80,000 kilometers will go very many years in the life of those vehicles. And lastly, perhaps what you should be doing is taking the approach advocated in the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. And very simply, don't panic. As ever, thank you very much for watching. If you've got any comments or criticisms or further questions, I'd really like to hear them. Feel free to comment in the comment section below. Give us a call, drop us an email. Once again, thanks for watching.